welcome today. We're going to talk about some more AI use cases and how to make AI work for your enterprise. And this is, by the way, just an incredibly important topic right now as we're reaching uh, uh, some somewhat of a, a pinnacle in terms of people moving into actually trying to find value for AI. Okay. So joining me today is Elizabeth Gomez Fidel, CRO at Dun and Bradstreet. So tell us about yourself and tell us a bit about Dun and Bradstreet. Sure. So um, I'm the Chief Revenue Officer for Dun and Bradstreet. <laughs> Uh, responsible for the end-to-end, go-to-market activities and customer engagement model. Um, and a little bit about DMB. Um, believe it or not, we've been in business for 180 years. Wow. And we are the largest uh, information business company, data and analytics, serving a very large and diverse customer base from very large um, enterprises all the way to small business, uh, small businesses. And we operate across all industries from banks, insurance companies to corporations, all the way to public companies and, and government institutions, and really helping uh, customers uh, uh, through a wide range of use cases and customer personas who so were engaging and having conversations with the chief data officers, CIOs, uh, head of marketing and sales, all the way to head of compliance and third party risk. And there are really three things that we help customers with. One is growth and revenue acceleration by helping them to understand who they could do business with and what is the target addressable market. Second is risk mitigation, helping institutions to understand who they can extend credit to and what is the credit worthiness of the vendors that you're doing business with or their suppliers or their customers. And third is help businesses to stay compliant. When you think about the large proliferation of regulation that we live all of is surrounding all of us today, we help customers to understand who they can do business with. Because think about reputational risk, right? And, uh, and all these areas around us. And at the core of Dun & Bradstreet, we have a crown jewel that we call the Duns. And those are business identifiers that are used by millions and millions of end users to really understand that the business that they have and they're doing business with is a legit business. And when it comes to AI, that becomes extremely key and entrenched in terms of training models. So everybody's in the AI right now. Yes. But no one can explain to me many times when I have people, you know, on my podcast and interview them for other things, what the value that they're finding within AI. So how is AI changing your business moving forward? Yeah. Look, I think uh, there is a lot going on right now in our lives, uh, both at work with our customers and our employees and at home with our children and our families. And the rise and the emergence of AI is really impacting our lives radically and changing and exponentially changing all our business model across all industries, whether you are in healthcare, retail, uh, financial services, media, telecom, you cannot ignore it, right? AI is opening uh, a tremendous opportunity in terms of the business outcomes that you can achieve uh, as you think ahead. Um, but AI doesn't sleep, AI doesn't eat, and is on 24 hours. And I think over the last 12 months, we crossed the threshold between perception and reality when it comes to AI, data, and businesses. And so I think data, data, trusted data, and verifiable data is at the core of this conversation. And it was very interesting, David, I was talking to a CEO of a large uh, AI company, and I said, what is the biggest challenge you have right now when you're interacting with your customers and your large language models? And he said, Isabel, we're running out of data and we need more trusted data to learn from. And I said, really? Think about trillions and trillions of data in the open web. But the question is, can it be trusted? Can it be verified? And do I have the right to use it? So at DMB, given that we're a data company uh, doing you know, business with customers and sourcing that data for very ethical vendors, uh, we take that at heart. And uh, we've been experimenting with many customers right now through, we, we launched actually 12 months ago, DMB AI Labs, uh, where we are in a very self, safe environment, able to try to make that data available and power up uh, the impact that we can have. Uh, we're launching a number of initiatives when it comes to AI to enable to democratize 
our knowledge and our intelligence of our data and the insights that it can provide. Yeah, you know what I love about what you say is what I tell my students, I, this, I always tell them this is not an AI problem, it's a data problem. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we have to get our data right to get the AI right because it learns from the data. And ultimately, it's, it's refreshing to hear someone say that because people are always talking about different AIs and talk about large yes. language models, things like that. And at the end of the day, it's some work to get your data in shape uh, to make it uh, usable for AI. So heard you through a bird that you guys are using IBM Watson X. So mm -hmm. how are you using IBM Watson X as a force multiplier for your business? So you said something really important, force multiplier, but let me give you a little bit of background of our relationship with IBM. So we've been uh, partnering with IBM for a number of years. Um, both we are a, a huge customer of IBM technology across DMB, but also IBM is a customer of DMB using our data across their enterprise data, master data management for multiple use cases, supply, um, uh, you know, sales and marketing use cases, et cetera. And, you know, when we were thinking about how can we make our data more available to end users, to customers, we thought, who could it be better than actually powering our data through Watson X or Orchestrate? And if you think about, for us, IBM is a trusted brand, is a technology company that is forward thinking, uh, is brought a huge amount of innovation, and it think responsibly about AI data, and is one of the few companies, if not only the one company, that actually has identified models for third party, uh, which is really important to us. Absolutely, and the thing is what my clients are talking about right now, they need to use or basically pick an AI provider that's going to provide them with a true force multiplier. And I always tell them, you need to look at the value of the partnership that you're moving into. The technology you leverage now is going to basically dictate how you're gonna leverage the technology for 10 or 20 years into the future. So how do you pick an AI partner like IBM? What do you look for? You know, how do you, how do you basically manage that relationship and uh, how do you define the future? Yeah, so look, uh, it's all about trusted and verifiable data and technology. And when you think about IBM, to me, what it comes to mind is uh, innovation, trust, responsibility. We both have very common values. We have both very strong brands. We've got a large customer base. And it's important that you partner with institutions that are going to amplify the role that you play in society. And I think um, IVN is one of them. Yeah, it's, it's a great company, but ultimately we have to look at what the technology provides and how to move things forward. So it was a trusted relationship that you depended on. So in other words, it was the trust into the company as well as the viability of the technology as well as applicability to your use case? All the above. And just to give you an example, just to ground what we're doing with them, um, we actually came with this idea of, wow, having transparency on supplier chain and the risk and visibility on suppliers is top of mind, right? Bearing in mind everything that is happening. What is the reputation of the supplier that you are choosing? Um, what are they, do they have the reputation and the ESG characteristics that you want? How can I onboard suppliers in a faster way? And so we thought we've got really relevant data for the use case. And if you think about IBM has thousands and thousands, right, of vendor and supplier. So how can we enable, uh, you know, uh, IBM to actually select for that use case and converse with our data and solve some of the issues when it comes to procurement and, and you know, selection of uh, third party. And so now they're using their customer one using uh, Ask procurement that we launch, uh, which is powered by Watson X Orchestrate. I'm proud to say that. And we're now making this available to all our joint customers. Last question, and most, probably the most important yes. question. What would advice would you have <clears throat> to organizations that are looking to create this journey and truly create partnerships, selecting technology, looking at the use cases to solve? Mm -hmm. You know, What's the one thing that they should know going into this journey? It's difficult to say just one thing, but be thoughtful, be ethical, be responsible, and make sure that you have a clear line of sight of what the ultimate outcome is and what you want to achieve and then make sure that you're partnering um, with uh, vendors and companies that have the same values to you so that you can be successful in that journey. 
You know, this is amazing because as we're moving into AI, uh, the successful use cases are there, mm -hmm. but they're they're hard to find. And it's amazing to hear your journey and your journey with Watson X and IBM and picking a partner and really kind of taking these use cases to the next level. And this is what it's all about, winning the little battles that are gonna win the larger war where we're able to use AI as a true innovative force multiplier for a business. And I think you guys have found it. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Uh, enjoyed this conversation. Uh, don't forget to check us out. Don't forget to check out IBM Watson X. Thank you.